It's been teased for months, planned and shot for so much longer. The Orville is now on a new home at Hulu, and we're thrilled to welcome back Tom Costantino to Trekzone to dive into season three of The Orville New Horizons. This is a Trek Zone Conversation. Well, Tom, thanks for a little bit of your time to have a Trek Zone Conversation. Welcome back. It's certainly been a long time in the planning, you and I, my friend. Been too long. I don't three, four tries, mostly my fault. <laughs> well, and also the here, overlook. Though. Exactly. And I do appreciate it. It's, you know, these are, these are the things that we do in, in life at the moment. Um, now, the Orville's <laughs> been in Space Dock for 37 months, season three, New Horizons, as it's been subtitled. It's been a long time in the planning and delayed a little longer for good measure. You've moved to streaming as well. The pandemic really has messed with things, hasn't it? It, uh, it, certainly, uh, it certainly has been an adventure. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I... Uh... I cannot believe. Didn't we talk right when everything shut down? Because it, it's all just yeah. It's all just one one giant month, right? Like like a week or two after we shut down, right? Yeah, sometime in there yeah. it was, it was certainly yeah. Just as things were really starting to ramp up, I was in my bedroom, uh, and uh, yeah, no, no, it, and that feels like yesterday, but that would now be two years and four months. <laughs> just incredible. <laughs> In terms of the pandemic, um, you know, so we've talked about it a little bit. There's been some press around um, what productions have been having to do. There's been some uh, still images, behind the scenes images uh, from Star Trek Strange New Worlds about um, cast and crew uh, donning masks and uh, and face shields and goggles and all these sort of yeah. things. I'm assuming that's all for insurance purposes. Uh, well, not just insurance purposes to keep the show on track with the big budgets, but also yes. to keep everyone safe. Uh, what sort of... Um, been the feeling there on the fox lot you know uh we had some very strict excellent protocols we had a great uh you know disney stepped up and we had a uh another team come in to help uh that uh that sort of helped design the protocols and uh you know i got one of my masks here actually uh you know things have loosened up in the lot a little bit you don't have to wear your mask outside and but uh you know the unions are still keeping the protocols pretty tight but um I always felt safe when I was here. We we really had very little incidents, um, but it was a well-oiled machine, and it uh, it was a ton of infrastructure. And you know, I probably had to swab up my nose multiple times a week, so but it kept us going. And and I think that's the biggest thing. And, and we're pretty lucky, you know. Australia was while Australia was a little bit more relaxed as, as it might be, yeah. uh, being an island nation, we're a little bit easier to uh, to uh, shut off from the rest of the world and uh, and. In more ways than more one. That, yeah, exactly right. We've got a few more people that listen to science and, and government direction as well. Um, we won't go into that. But, you know, it, it, yeah, it's yeah. been funny. We've opened up now. We've sort of realised that after two years of being a, a sheltered turtle that um, that we've got to open up. We've had some explosions in cases yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, in yeah. terms of working, um, you know, I think we're pretty lucky that aside from the initial, uh, oh, my gosh, how are we going to deal with this pandemic, uh, we've been back at work um, and, and just getting on with things. Uh, and I guess that's pretty lucky for our industry to be able to do that as well. Yeah, exactly. There was one day, it was the last, honestly, it lasted about three days. You know, I was I was late to come back to set. I was, you know, I did not need to be on set and then, or, or at the lot. And then it became apparent that m- me working remotely was probably, all the time was probably not the best idea. So then I started working more hybrid, but Probably the first day I felt like it was, you know, obviously I missed everyone and it was like an alien landscape. And then probably by that Thursday of that week, it was like, it was, you know, second nature. I mean, it does, it is a lot. I have to admit, you know, having this on for six, 16 hours a day, you know, yeah. does create some sort of like challenges and you do a lot of what? There's a <laughs> lot of that. Like, wait, What? And also, too, uh, being able to communicate. Uh, the biggest thing for me in the last few weeks is I've started doing a bit more uh, corporate work and a bit more uh, stage work as well. So that communication nice. behind the scenes um, where you can sort of just lean over into someone's ear and just sort of whisper and they can yeah. sort of pick up your um, uh, your your lip movements to understand what you're saying, that, that completely right. disappears. And it also becomes a bit of a, whoa, back off <laughs> moment as well. It, so, well, there... Well, you, yeah, you're sort of not used to it, but there's also, you know, there is an intimacy to, to working on a set and also working in production. And we, people, I'm going to get, for lack of a better word, 
guff for this, but I don't feel like we're, we have fully ever recovered from that. There's still some sort of like, we all sort of forgot to sort of how be around each other. Um, mm. Although I think things are mostly back to normal. There's still like this extra element of, you know, not weirdness, but, uh, but like, it's not as organic as it used to be, you know, like lunches can still be a little odd. Uh, you know, there's still, there's still, it, 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 it's just, it takes a little more effort to be as congealed as we used to be, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly right. I, I, but I think, I think in the end, it's all going to come back to us. Uh, you know, I look at photos from 2019, uh, just before yeah. everything happened, and look at all the crowds that we were in and stuff like that, and and wonder how we're going to get back to that. But I, I think we will. I think it'll get back to a point of just um, moving on yeah. a little bit as it is, and and you know acknowledging that there is especially here in australia that we're still having a lot of deaths and we're still having a lot of cases we're actually right. sort of surpassing uh a lot of the bigger countries now in terms of daily right. outlets. um no 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 it just but it adds it does an extra it adds an extra element you know things are things are life life is hard enough and then just having an extra layer of this is you know I feel like dystopia yeah. isn't like you see in the movies. It just sort of just like kind of shows up and I just, yeah. you know, it's like normal life. Plus this big stuff behind you. you know? yeah. So. yeah, exactly right. And it's almost like um, warming up, warming up the kettle. You don't realize how hot it is yeah. um, because you've just been warming up the kettle. So, but look, we're, right. we're not here for dystopian futures and, no, uh, no, we can and COVID, but talk the fun it's stuff. interesting. And it's interesting how much it's become part of our life to just sort of now it's, yeah, of course. it's just part of a discussion. It's it's quite interesting. Now, let's get back to the Orville. Exactly. I, I still have to watch the second season final, uh, so I don't know how or if. I, I know they do. Our heroes get out of that year of hell, but I'm assuming they did. They have to. Season three is coming. Was that meant as yeah. a farewell uh, if you didn't get picked up again? What was the sort of feeling around Fox at the time? If I am going back to my memory banks, I think we knew we were getting picked up. So I think I'm speaking for Seth, which I don't like to do, but I think he generally writes things close ended one because I think he doesn't want to always throw everything in a cliffhanger because it's sort of a, a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a trope, but also like, you know, if it ends, it ends. And at least like there's some sort of closure. So I feel like that's how he just does his seasonal work, but we knew we were getting picked up. I think it was just endless amounts of, of how and where and, all that so that was never the specter but how he closes the season is separate of how a show continues not a lot, a lot of showrunners do it that way i know some showrunners sometimes they like that they'll like almost put a dare out and be like we're gonna end on a cliffhanger and you're gonna re oh you didn't renew us oh <laughs> damn it happens all the time so many sci-fi shows have done that yeah yeah well what does the move to hulu mean for the production is it a little freer than broadcast tv it well, it is. It's freer in the ways that I probably have babbled on before. It's you know obviously length of episode. Um, it's really freeing to not have to cut to time. It's really freeing to allow B stories and A stories intertwine, and they can both you know one does not need to get truncated in service of of an arbitrary clock. Um, we still have acts because Hulu has commercials for the non paying stuff, and that's good because it keeps the show format our style. But, um, you know, uh, we don't necessarily have to. There's some shows on Hulu that just, you know, sort of like come in and like as a cliffhanger of a scene, then there's a second of black and another another scene. So it's almost organic if you're not paying attention. Um, we use we use it to our advantage to still have that sort of, uh, uh, you know, sci fi ish uh, weekly episodic feel. But um yeah, it's I mean, we're not really cursing much more. We're not there's not there's not going to be like you know, uh, naked Kalon running around, or it's just not our style, but it, it, it you know, we don't have to have 10,000 discussions about, uh, certain words or certain scenarios. Um, yeah, yeah. I love, I love it actually. Very nice. Well, we are just a fortnight away from the highly anticipated return. Uh, how far along is post-production? I, I could probably imagine everything's all signed, sealed and delivered at this point. Yes. <laughs> no, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of stuff. No, we're we're in the middle. We're 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 more than we're obviously way more than halfway through. I mean, all of them are in various states of completion. Some of them are obviously very completed, and then you know, they're, they're the later episodes are still cooking. You know, visual effects. I mean, they're all edited. Um, you know, we still do some tweaking and stuff. You know, they're almost all scored. Uh, they're partially mixed. 
uh, they're partially colored. And we'll be working, you know, you know, through our delivery dates, you know, we'll hit our delivery dates, but we are, we're, we're actively, we don't let it go until it's as perfect as it can be as a, as a, as a family. Well, I, I wonder a little bit too, is, is having all of this time um, a bit of a curse as well to sort of look at things and, and try and make things as, as perfect as possible? It's a blessing because the episodes continue to improve. It is a curse because, you know, some, like everything else, a, uh, an end is, uh, is important in, in, in television and film production. So having this extra time, you know, there's episodes that have been around for years <laughs> and uh you know sometimes some of the decisions you made two years ago now you're relooking at it with fresh eyes so it's like it, it is definitely it's definitely unprecedented in terms because we've never had a pandemic run in the middle of stuff before but mm. in the end it's a positive uh it's a positive thing because we've been able to for lack of a better word frame f them to an inch of their life Season three was delayed a little bit. We originally had uh, a release that uh, uh, was due a few weeks ago, uh, maybe a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, push back to this June date. Uh, can yeah. you explain any sort of reasoning behind that? Was that a Hulu decision oh, to sort of get away from things? It was. It was. A, it was a bunch of decisions. It was. A, it was. Um, it just made sense from a marketing standpoint and a timing standpoint. It gave us a little more time to 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 put. Uh, oh, I lost you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Uh, to, to sort of uh, dot our I's, cross our T's. And um, I, I think, um, you know, it, it just it just made made the most sense. We would have been able to sort of make our dates in in March, but they, they were able to support us more fully uh, in in June. So in the end, it, at first it seemed like, oh, God, another four months. But, you know, obviously we put the we put the clip out so people could see that we weren't messing around. And um, in the end, it, it was, uh, I think it, it worked out for the best. Um, some people, it's funny, they thought like we were trying to like avoid other sci-fi properties, but they're, they're all over the place. And so it's, it, there, there was no decision in that. Like, you know, we're like landing right in the middle of Strange New Worlds and Kenobi, and they're both great. I mean, well, I haven't seen Kenobi. I've obviously seen Strange New Worlds, but I have friends who work on Kenobi and I've heard great things. So, um, you know, we're not trying to, there's no way to avoid anything. So that wasn't yeah, part of it. Exactly right, and I think I think trying to avoid Star Trek now is going to be a little bit a little bit impossible with about five shows in in production. It's I mean, going to be all year. Avoid anything, yeah. Exactly. You can't avoid Star. I mean, and, and there's no reason to. I mean, they're, they're doing our thing. We're doing our. They're doing their thing. We're doing our thing. I mean, like, what are you going to do? Run away from Halo? I mean, all from all mankind's coming out. It's just like, I mean, it's a bonanza for sci-fi fans. But uh, there's there's no like, oh, the month of August is mine. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, the other thing no. that I, I think is going to be really good for for the Orville, um, aside from look, there there is a little bit of you know international release. It, it's obviously open a little yeah. bit more to international release. Not as much maybe as it, as it could be, maybe as, as people would hope, but it is there, and, and that's a that's a corporate decision. It's it's going yeah. to happen eventually. I know it's coming to Disney Plus in a few countries, uh, which is very very exciting. Um, I still have to check on uh, whether SBS is going to pick it up here in Australia again, but. They are. Uh, they are. Well, they, uh, I believe it, yes, I believe they are, and I believe it's it's the third, which is the second for us. So basically, the same time. Um, that is very. And cool. there's more coming. It, there's. Uh, it's not the end of the announcements. I mean, there was a chunk that was announced recently, but there'll be more. Yeah, I was just going to say that brand new yeah, shiny trailer that dropped uh, at the end of last week as well. So, plenty of teasers coming up. Is there any planning yeah. for season four yet, Tom? Not yet. I mean. <laughs> There's desire, uh, but uh, not not hard planning yet. So very cool. Uh, I think well, they're, we're gonna. I think they're gonna see what the metrics are, and you know, Seth's a busy man, but uh, you know, I think I think the heart is willing. So I think we'll see how this how this goes. Very right. very cool. Well, I've got to I've got to ask that question. Obviously, we've got to get started on season three and see how it's going. Who has yeah. got to assess it from a corporate perspective as well? Right. And that's that's the world we live in, and and hopefully they decide to give you some money again, uh, and you can make right. a full season. Um, you know, we've talked uh, over the last couple of years. You might have been on a couple of times during the pandemic, but you know, Doug Drexler's in the in the production staff now on the art department. Yeah. You've got all of these uh, Trek alum working behind the scenes. Star Trek's tried to suck some of them back as well. Well, uh, just very quickly, uh, they're already they're already there. Well, and this is they're the brilliant thing there. of having production uh, production space down yeah, yeah. over a couple of years. 
No, they're very lucky. They have Doug. I mean, well, I mean, Doug was always Star Trek, so we were lucky to have Doug. But they have Kit Stolen over there, who is, uh, you know, one, our art director, amazing guy. I mean, you know, we share people. But I, I follow a lot of them on, uh, you know, on Twitter and Instagram, like Dave Blass. I mean, I love his his work on Picard. You know, his the, the Stargazer, I thought was very cool. I know there was some controversy about carpets, but like we don't have we we got rid of some of our carpets too. So I guess we're gonna get the same we're gonna get the same <laughs> argument. Not there's still carpets, they're just not all over the place. There's 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 we're we're at fifty carp fifty percent carpet capacity now. So <laughs> have you but, put uh, it on the ceiling? Apparently shuttlecraft in the twenty fourth century have to have carpet on the ceiling. Did we have? We might have had that. We still might have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, Tom We have carpet exciting. that goes up the walls. <laughs> well, there you go. People can't complain. Yeah. They shouldn't complain. No. They should just sit there and enjoy it. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, Tom, exciting times ahead. I cannot wait to treat myself to a double episode on uh, June 3. Thanks for having a Trek Zone conversation today and looking forward to season three. Thanks for having me. Oh.